The movie begins in the vibrant city of Kanpur, India. A man riding his motorbike enters a home. He is Mahesh, the maternal uncle of our protagonist, Satyendra Misra, commonly referred to as Sadhu. As he enters the home, he finds the family members at the dining table. Mahesh's sister, Shani Misra, asks about the task she assigned him. Smiling, he takes out a picture from his pocket and places it delicately before her. Turns out that he was sent by her to find a suitable match for her son, Sadhu. The sheer radiance of the girl in the photograph captivates Shanti, and her husband, Jugal Kishore Misra, readily gives his nod of approval. With a sparkle in his eye, he instructs his daughter to summon Sadhu, conveying that he is destined to meet the girl in the photograph on the upcoming Sunday. On Sunday, Sadhu is getting ready when his friend asks him what annoys him the most about meeting up with the girl. Sadhu, already exasperated, expresses his astonishment at how a sane person could decide in only 10 minutes whether the other person is the one. A wrong decision potentially shatters the delicate tapestry of one's life. Yet, as his friend gazes at the photograph, he suggests that some risks are worth taking. The scene switches, and we are then introduced to the leading lady of our story, Artie Shukla, an extremely beautiful young lady. She stands in her hostel room, getting ready to meet Sadhu. On the other end of a phone call, her mother Manju dispenses wisdom on looking impeccable for the occasion. While talking, Artie requests her mom to talk to her dad one last time, because she doesn't want to get married so soon. She dreams of studying further and excelling in her career. In a resigned tone, Manju conveys the futility of such a plea, reassuring Artie that her destiny lies in meeting this prospective groom. While Artie is ranting about the fact that she won't get married if the boy is not suitable, her father overhears her over the phone. He takes it from Manju and warns Artie that she would be a stupid person to reject the boy, and if she did such thing, he would not forgive her. Faced with her father's unwavering resolve, Artie's voice falls silent, and she reluctantly embarks on the path that destiny has chosen for her, to meet Sadhu. The moment of the meeting finally arrives. Artie arrives at a cafe and finds Sadhu patiently waiting for her. Rising from his seat, he warmly greets her and offers her the chair opposite him. As she settles in, she quips that she's prepared for an interview, but Sadhu chuckles, dispelling the notion, claiming that they both are there to meet each other and to see if they are compatible or not. She admits that meetings like this always make her queasy, because how is it possible to make a life-changing decision in half an hour? Seeing that they both have the same views, he smiles and gets comfortable. He begins by sharing a bit about himself, mentioning his government job as a clerk in the excise department. Artie, however, can't help but question his integrity, playfully suggesting that he might be fond of bribes as shortcuts to success. But he smiles, saying that he doesn't believe in bribes, and will never use them as crutches for a better future. The waiter arrives with their coffee, interrupting their conversation. But after he leaves, she asks about his expectations from his future wife. Her astonishment grows as Sadhu reveals a refreshingly unconventional desire, that he simply wishes for a partner, a friend who will stand by him through thick and thin. Seeing each other's untraditional expectations impresses them, resulting in them both agreeing to the marriage. In a heartfelt moment, Sadhu compliments her radiant appearance in her pink attire. Meanwhile, back at Artie's home, her parents and maternal uncle, Jogi, share a meal when her cousin Ranjan joins them. He informs them about his preparations for the third attempt of the competitive exam, PCS, asking for their prayers. He also mentions advising Artie to appear in the exam, considering her academic prowess, with the expectation that she'll excel in her first attempt. Hearing this, her father gets angry and snaps that these sorts of jobs are not suitable for girls, they should sit back and look after their families. He then informs Jogi that they are invited to the Misra house the coming day. Later that night, at the Misra residence, Shanti informs Jugal that Artie's family will be visiting them. He nods in agreement, but drops a bombshell. He and Sadhu have decided not to accept any dowry from the bride's family. She looks at her husband like he has gone crazy, as she firmly believes that they need dowry to ensure a proper wedding for their daughter, Poonam. She goes to sleep, mentioning that her brother Mahesh will be present during Artie's family's visit, as they need someone sensible to discuss the wedding arrangements. Despite the sting of her words, Jugal, hurt but contemplative, ultimately decides to remain silent. As the sun rises over the horizon, Artie's father and uncle drive over to the Misra residence, bearing in mind their willingness to offer a dowry of 1.2 million rupees. But they are left speechless when Mahesh boldly demands a staggering amount of 2.5 million. Jogi decides to leave, but Mr. Shukla turns to Jugal and earnestly expresses his desire to wed his daughter to Sadhu. He vows to manage the dowry, despite the shocking demand. Jugal, embarrassed by what Mahesh said, tries to control the situation by saying that they can give whatever they want. But Mahesh once again steps in, silencing Jugal, and saying that his nephew is a government employee, and Jugal himself is a professor. Considering all these facts, 2.5 million is enough. A heated exchange ensues between the two maternal uncles, Mahesh and Jogi. Mahesh mentions another family offering 4 million in dowry and, almost challenging Jogi's resolve, suggests that he leave if he's not interested in marrying 
marrying his niece into the Misra family. But her father, adamant on marrying Artie into this family, agrees to their condition. On the way back home, Jogi scolds his brother-in-law for agreeing to the absurd terms. However, Mr. Shukla defends his decision, considering themselves fortunate to have found a gentleman like Sadhu at a relatively low cost, determined not to let this opportunity slip through their fingers. In the days that follow, Sadhu becomes Artie's charming knight, comparing her beauty to the renowned actress Juhai Chawla. She blushes at the compliment, and playfully dubs him her Sharak Khan. He drives her to meet his friends, and they start spending more time together, slowly falling in love. Every time Artie smiles, it sets a symphony playing in Sadhu's heart, and the mere sight of him causes her heart to skip a beat. One day over coffee, he confesses that he hasn't felt this happy in forever, and getting married to her is one of the best decisions he has ever made. He then asks where she wants to go to for their honeymoon, and blushing, she replies Musori, a hill station. Leaning in closer, she confides a secret desire, to share a moment of intoxication with her future husband. Sadhu can't help but laugh at her endearing request, silently marveling at the extraordinary stroke of luck that brought them together. As the wedding preparations kick into high gear, Artie's elder sister, Apa, who is already married, returns home for the impending celebration. Sadhu visits the market to buy the perfect lingerie for his future wife, settling on a delicate shade of pink. Simultaneously, Artie immerses herself in shopping for her wedding attire, her eyes drawn to every shade of pink as she envisions the moments to come. The ladies get pampered, while the men make sure that the house is fully decorated. Amidst these bustling preparations, the air is electric with excitement. One night, Artie is on the roof with her sister, Apa, sharing a quiet moment. As Apa indulges in a cigarette, Artie curiously questions whether her husband knows about this habit. Apa chuckles, revealing that they share everything, emphasizing that a successful marriage hinges on two key elements, a satisfying intimate life, and financial stability. Right at this moment Sadhu calls Artie, and Apa asks her to put the phone on speaker. He extends his heartfelt birthday wishes, and asks for a meet-up at the temple, because it has been so long since he last saw her. Artie's face lights up with a smile, and she readily accepts his invitation. After the call ends, her sister praises Sadhu, calling him a romantic boy. She jests about Artie's potentially fiery intimate life, but comments that Sadhu seems like a miser, because he invited her to the temple instead of a restaurant. Unfazed by the jest, Artie beams and defends Sadhu, lauding his caring nature as the quality that truly matters. The next day, Artie reaches the temple at the agreed-upon time. She enters the room, and finds it filled with red and white balloons and rose petals. She thanks him for everything, but he is not done yet. From his pocket, he retrieves a piece of paper and, with heartfelt sincerity, recites a poem he composed exclusively for her. Surrounded by a sea of roses, he finally musters up the courage and confesses his love for her. He eagerly awaits her response, but Artie, in a playful twist, laughs and hints that her own confession will come after they tie the knot. Sadhu, undeterred, takes a leap of faith and asks if he can steal a kiss, leaning in closer. Their lips draw near, but just before contact, she teasingly pushes him away, both sharing a hearty laugh. As a final surprise he hands her the gift, a mini model of the legendary Taj Mahal, an iconic symbol of love. Giggling with joy, she leaves, reminding him of their upcoming meeting tomorrow, the day they embark on their matrimonial journey together. In the quiet embrace of night, Sadhu drifts into a dream world, envisioning their wedding day, where he and Artie are finally united in a celebration of love. He dreams about the night of their wedding, where they embrace passionately, their hearts overflowing with love. They spend their days having fun, singing, dancing in the rain, and just like what Apa said, their sex life is fire. In his dream, he envisions them as parents, raising twins together, a vision of happiness and completeness, but this dream ends when he is woken up by his sister Poonam. He awakens with a smile, cherishing the memory of that beautiful dream. At the Haldi ceremony, Apa welcomes Sadhu to the family by playfully applying Haldi to his face, and arms. He laughs when she calls him pretty. Chani inquiries about Apa's husband's absence from the event, and Apa explains that his role as a junior engineer demands his time, but he'll surely attend the wedding ceremony. Chani hums in approval, but then goes on complimenting her son, and the fact that he has a government job. But things start to go downhill when Apa praises Artie's fortune and being able to work after marriage. Shandy's expression darkens as she sternly proclaims that she won't permit her daughter-in-law to work, at least not while she is still alive. On the much-anticipated wedding day, the wedding procession readies to leave, with excitement in the air. Artie, all dressed up in her bridal attire, calls Sadhu and expresses her nervousness, but he ensures her that everything will be fine. When the call ends, her sister barges into her room, seemingly furious. Confused why Apa is getting furious, Artie wears an innocent expression. Turns out she attempted the PCS test and cleared it. She screams in happiness and hugs her friend Neelam tightly. Her imagination soars as she envisions herself as Officer Artie Sadi Andramisra, brimming with excitement about her wedding day being one of the luckiest moments in her life. She hugs Artie, a bittersweet smile gracing her face. Amidst the whirlwind of wedding preparations, 
their father, engrossed in arranging for the arrival of the wedding procession, is hit with unexpected news. A power reveals that Artie has successfully cleared her PCS exam, a significant professional achievement. However, her father, who is not a fan of women succeeding professionally, comments that he doesn't cares about Artie's career, as she is going to be the daughter-in-law of Jugal Misra, it is he who should be concerned about her career. This revelation triggers Apa's emotions, and she passionately argues that Artie is a gifted and talented young woman, and marrying her into a family that stifles her potential would be ending her life. All attempts to convince her father go in vain, so Apa decides to take matters in her own hands. Frustrated and determined to protect her sister's aspirations, Apa takes a drastic step. She rushes to Artie, who is blissfully awaiting her groom's arrival, and delivers the harsh truth that her mother-in-law won't let her work. Artie is taken aback, as this contradicts the agreement she had with Sadu, who supports her aspirations. Panic sets in, since she can't spend her life as a housewife. She tries calling Sadu, but Apa swiftly confiscates the phone, reminding her that once she becomes an officer, clerks like Sadu will be under her command. Apa urges Artie to escape her own wedding, but Artie hesitates, unwilling to hurt Sadu's feelings. Uncle Jogi, overhearing the emotional exchange, intervenes in inquiries about Artie's desires. Tearfully, she admits that she wants to be an officer, but is worried about her dad and Sadu. Jogi gives her his blessings, encouraging Artie to pursue her dreams, and promises to handle the situation later on. The sisters embrace their uncle tightly, tears flowing like a river. As Artie changes into regular clothes, her sister packs her stuff. She begs Apa to let her talk to Sadu one last time, but she sternly warns her not to. They leave the room, but bump into their mom. Manju cries and hugs her daughter, but doesn't stop her. Sadu arrives at her place, not knowing that Artie just ran away, shattering his dreams in the process. Finding out that Artie has left to pursue her dreams, their father erupts in anger, slapping Apa for her role in guiding her sister. Apa begins to cry and apologizes, but their father continues to berate her and Manju, struggling to comprehend the situation. He begins to panic, but Jogi steps in, emphasizing the need for unity during this critical time, and taking matters into his own hands to find a resolution. The men from both families gather for an unexpected meeting, and when Jugal Misra inquires about this sudden meeting, Jogi informs them that after knowing that they took a dowry of 2.5 million rupees, Artie ran away. Panic spreads among the men like wildfire, and in a desperate need to get in touch with her, Sadu takes out his phone, finding a message waiting for him. In the message, Artie reveals that she successfully cleared her PCS exam, and is on the path to becoming an officer. The world comes crashing down around him, but he continues to call her fervently, clinging to the hope that she might answer. On the other hand, Mahesh assassinates her character, insinuating that she has run away with her lover. The quarrel escalates into a full fight, but before any harm can happen, Sadhu steps in, saying that he is bringing back the money they took as dowry. Dejected, he runs from room to room, shouting Artie's name, when he bumps into a path. With tears flowing, he asks her about Artie, but when she doesn't respond, he goes on and asks his friend to take the procession back. Feeling utterly helpless, he runs frantically, sobbing. Upon returning home, he finds his mom hysterical. She begs him to bring back her husband. Together, they visit a jeweler to sell her gold jewelry in a desperate bid to rectify the situation. Later, Artie calls Apa to inquire about the situation. She informs her that Sadhu and his family have returned the money they took as dowry, and Jogi is staying at their place for a few days to handle the situation. Crying, she asks Apa's permission to call Sadhu one last time, and she agrees, remembering the heartbreak in his eyes. On the way back from Artie's home, Sadhu's father Jugal suffers a heart attack, but survives. He shares his anguish about facing questions from others about why the wedding didn't take place. Tears of embarrassment fill his eyes, and Sadhu hugs him, his own eyes filled with tears. Just as emotions run high, he gets a call from Artie. Seeing her name light up the screen, his heart skips a beat, but he declines the call and turns off his phone, leaving their future hanging in uncertainty. Five years later, Artie has finally succeeded in achieving her dreams, and is now Officer Artie Shukla in Lucknow. In her office, she is engrossed in her duties when Neelam arrives, commenting that Artie was lucky to clear her PCS exam in one attempt. Neelam expresses her gratitude, acknowledging Artie as the reason she secured her own job, and Artie offers a gentle smile, humbly accepting the acknowledgement. Back at Shukla residence, Jogi, Ranjan, Apa and her father are playing cards, when Apa delivers the exciting news that Artie is getting promoted. Mr. Shukla, brimming with pride upon hearing about his daughter's accomplishments, smiles warmly. Manju is very happy about her daughter's success, but still wishes for her to get married one day. Later, Artie hears the doorbell and opens the door to her house, finding two officers outside. They inform her that she has been suspended from her job, due to allegations of accepting a 30 million rupee bribe from a businessman named Kukraja. She gasps in disbelief, because she is innocent. 
Later, she seeks the assistance of her senior, only to be met with a disheartening response, that he can't do anything, because there is solid evidence against her, and the inquiry has already started. To make matters worse, the district magistrate himself is overseeing her case, and has summoned her to his office. The next day she goes to his office, only to discover that the officer in charge of her case is none other than her ex-fiancé, Sadi Andromisra. She addresses him affectionately as Sadu, but he coldly instructs her to refer to him as, Sir. He inquiries about her length of service, to which she responds with four years. He glances at her and accuses her of seeking career success through bribery. Sad, she tries to sit down, but he looks at her and asks if he gave her the permission to do so. Shocked at his behavior, she stares at him, but eventually gets up. Desperate to proclaim her innocence, she begins to explain, but he sharply interrupts her, asserting that when found guilty, she will face the consequences, suspension from her job and six years in jail. He leaves his office, and she just stands there dumbfounded. Sadhu gets a call from Poonam's husband Priyanch who appreciates him for keeping an eye on Artie and attacking at the right moment. He then questions if he thinks that Artie is guilty or not, but Sadhu replies that this doesn't matter. What counts is that he intends to punish her for what he deems her wrongdoing, for in matters of love and war, everything is fair. On the other hand, Mahesh brings sweets for Jugal and Shanti, congratulating them because Artie is about to be imprisoned. Filled with joy, Shanti excitedly calls Sadhu to inform him about Artie's bribery case, unaware that he is the one overseeing it. Without any response, he hangs up the call. Afterward, painful flashbacks of the turmoil his family endured after Artie's departure haunt his thoughts. He swiftly gets into his car, and along with the police squad, arrives at Artie's residence for a search operation. As she watches them turn her house upside down, fond memories of her happier moments with Sadhu flood her mind. While going through her belongings, Sadhu discovers a picture of them together and ruthlessly rips it in half, even destroying the miniature Taj Mahal that he gifted her. Later that night, Apa and Neelam arrive at her place to help her clean up. Neelam suggests that Sadhu, now an Aya's officer, may be seeking revenge for Artie's actions five years ago. Overwhelmed by emotion, Artie begins to cry, so Apa advises her to go apologize to Sadhu, and maybe he will forgive her, considering that he loved her dearly. The next day Artie visits Sadhu's place, which to her surprise, is grand. Upon her arrival, she inquiries about his well-being, but he remains cold and unwavering. She expresses her regret for leaving him on their wedding day, and apologizes, but he scoffs at her, believing her visit is solely related to his role in her case. He comments that she is looking very desirable, and he humiliates her by saying that they should get to the work she is here for, and gets up to shut the doors. Uncomfortable and offended, she pleads with him not to address her in such a manner. He moves closer, making unwelcome advances and insinuating that she is there to seduce him. Angered, Artie stands up to leave, but he prevents her, issuing a warning that her beauty won't make him forget the pain his family endured. She begs him to not make the case personal. Tearfully, she departs from his house, her emotions in turmoil. In the next few days, the investigation into Artie's case intensifies, with Sadhu diligently uncovering various pieces of evidence pointing towards her guilt. He conducts numerous interrogations, and all signs seem to converge on Artie as the prime suspect. Artie visits her boss, who informs her that she has the right to change her investigation officer, but it is better if she doesn't. One day she goes to have lunch, where a lawyer approaches her and offers to help her negotiate with her investigation officer, unaware that Sadhu is seated nearby. Overhearing the conversation, Sadhu intervenes and asks if the lawyer knows Artie, she tries to deny it, but he calls himself her friend. Later in his office, Sadhu instructs Artie to write a letter for him. The letter is addressed to his parents, informing them that every single piece of evidence is against Artie, and there is no hope left for her. Tears flow from her eyes, but she doesn't utter a single word. At a party one night, Sadhu is with Priyanch and some of his friends when Artie arrives, seeking a private conversation. But he humiliates her in front of everyone by saying that 30 million wasn't enough, and she should have taken a bribe of at least 300 million, considering that in the end she would be imprisoned. Later, as Sadhu exits the restroom, Artie corners him and shouts that she can't bear this torture anymore, she can't breathe, and this will be the end of her. She berates him for taking advantage of the situation to exact revenge for what happened five years ago. She confesses that she was confused back then, as his mom refused to let her work after marriage. Infuriated, he snaps back that she should have talked to him, since he was the one in love with her, but she didn't even think about him once in these five years. Crying, Artie contends that if she hadn't left him five years ago, he wouldn't have become an Aya's officer, but would have remained a mere clerk. At her words, something changes, and realization dawns upon him that she left him because she didn't want to marry a mere clerk. She tries to tell him that she doesn't mean this, but he leaves. But she stops him, says that if he wants to send her to jail, he should call the police immediately, at least she won't suffer daily. As she cries hysterically, he places his hands on her shoulders, asking her to calm down, and promises that they will talk calmly. Later, he apologizes for getting angry, takes out a cigarette, and begins smoking. Noticing the cigarette in his hand, Artie questions the sudden habit, considering he didn't smoke or drink before. 
he confesses that he turned to it for solace after her departure. Then he leans in and requests a kiss, assuring her he won't judge her character, and later they can spend a night together in a five-star hotel, which would be the price to avoid imprisonment. However, she pushes him away and calls herself a fool for not understanding his true nature. As she departs in tears, he suggests another option, paying him a bribe of 30 million rupees, even if it requires seeking assistance from Kukurja. On the other hand, Mr. Shukla and Jogi arrive at the Misra residence and beg Shanti and Jugal for Artie. Shanti responds bluntly, stating that if Sadhu demands 30 million rupees, they should find a way to secure the money, even if it means selling all their possessions. The next day, Artie arrives at the Kukurja group of companies and meets the businessmen. She implores him to tell the truth, admitting that he didn't bribe her with 30 million rupees in order to save her life. However, he remains obstinate in his claim that she indeed accepted the bribe. Artie continues to deny the allegations, unaware that Sadhu is secretly watching their conversation through a hidden camera. Sadhu takes action and orders Artie's immediate arrest, accusing her of attempting to manipulate the investigation. Artie is arrested, and her family cries from humiliation. Her mom hands all of her jewelry to Jogi to sell and bail Artie out. On the other hand, Artie is in prison, and when Sadhu arrives, she questions if he is finally satisfied, now that she is being punished. In response, he wishes her a happy birthday. Artie scoffs and considers her night in prison the best birthday gift she has ever received. As he turns to leave, with tears falling from her eyes, she says that she wishes that they had never met. Upon returning home, he finds her dad and uncle waiting for him, who offer him the papers to their house, pleading for Artie's release. This gesture, a heartbreaking testament to their desperation. The next day, in front of the jury, Sadhu shows all the necessary evidence required in Artie's case. He plays the video of Artie's meeting with Kukraja, which reveals that after Artie's departure, Neelam arrived and advised Kukraja to frame Artie. Artie is shocked and devastated to see her best friend's betrayal captured on video. Every eye in the room turns toward Neelam, who just sits there, eyes downcast. After the video ends, Sadhu explains that Neelam's husband, a schoolteacher, was a childhood friend of the broker who arranged the 30 million rupee deal. Taking advantage of Artie's trust, Neelam manipulated her into signing the papers, and they had been taking bribes in Artie's name for years. Artie sits there, crying, feeling utterly betrayed by her best friend. After watching the video and listening to Sadhu, the jury declares Artie innocent, and orders Neelam to be arrested. After everyone leaves, Artie expresses her gratitude to Sadhu, and confesses that she now understands the profound pain of betrayal by someone close. He leaves, and on his way out, informs Mr. Misra that Artie is not guilty. At this moment, Manju calls her husband and informs him that Sadhu has returned the house papers. He ends the call, tears streaming down his face, and embraces his daughter with overwhelming relief and joy. Later, Artie goes to Sadhu's place, only to find that he is not there. She tries calling him, but he never picks up. By the time he reaches Kanpur, his phone shows 70 missed calls from Artie. At night, Artie and Apam are having tea when she says that Sadhu still loves her, and this love is the thing which fueled the hatred. She believes that the only obstacle between them is Sadhu's rational mind, that tells him not to fall in love again. Artie sees it as her mission to silence his rationality, so he can hear the voice of his heart. A few days later, Sadhu is out jogging when Artie joins and asks him to stop running, because they have come a long way from their past. Sadhu, annoyed, asks her to leave him alone, claiming they are on different paths. She laughs and retorts that their destination is the same, though their paths may diverge. Annoyed, Sadhu runs away. On another occasion, as Sadhu is returning from work, Artie asks him for a lift, because her car has broken down. As she sits in the car, he gets out and asks his driver to drop her home. Later at night, he is at a restaurant waiting for Priyanch when Artie appears out of nowhere and gulps down his shot of whiskey. After three shots, she is visibly drunk, and after the fourth shot, she eventually passes out. The next morning, she wakes up to find that Sadhu dropped her home the previous night, and sends him a thank you message. Later in the evening, he is at the seashore when Artie arrives, confesses that she has fallen for him, and proposes to him. He scoffs and questions whether she is doing all this just because he didn't send her to jail. He then admits that the day he saw his family break, he promised himself not to marry again, and leaves her heartbroken. Even though they are miles apart, they spend their days reminiscing about each other, and shedding tears of longing and regret. Months pass by, and preparations for Artie's wedding are in full swing at the Shuckler residence. Apal looks at the wedding invitation card, reflecting on her sister's upcoming marriage. On the other hand, the card reaches the Misra residence, and Shani comments on Artie's impending marriage, noting that Sadhu remains unmarried. His parents express their desire for him to marry soon, hoping to see him settled before they pass away. Annoyed by their comments, Sadhu leaves for the temple. At the temple, he bumps into Artie. They engage in small talk, and he congratulates her on her wedding. As they exit the temple, they encounter Sherrod, Artie's fiancé. Sherrod thanks Sadhu for not marrying Artie, stating that he would have lost a gem. Artie rushes back inside, and Sadhu is left alone with Sherrod. Sadhu warns Sherrod not to marry Artie, claiming that she is unstable, considering that a few months ago she was desperate to marry him, and now is marrying Sherrod. 
When he gets to his car, Artie stops him and drags him to the room behind the temple, where years ago, he wished her a happy birthday. In the room, Artie confronts Sadhu for calling her unstable. She is upset that he won't marry her, but also won't let her marry anyone else. Sadhu questions whether she loves him, and she admits that she does. However, he scoffs at her for marrying someone else, despite her feelings for him. Artie explains that Sadhu's ego prevents him from marrying her, so she has decided to go through with her wedding. She asks Sadhu to attend her wedding, and before leaving, she turns around and crashes her lips on his, tears falling down her face. On the wedding day, Sadhu finds his parents dressed up for Artie's wedding. He asks them not to go, but they ignore his orders and force him to attend the wedding with them. Sadhu, along with his family, arrives at the venue and is welcomed by Apa, who informs him that Artie was asking about him. Apa whisks the groom away for the rituals, and once left alone, he spots Artie dressed in a pink lehenga. Seeing her as a bride is his undoing, he rushes towards her and admits that he was a fool for rejecting her. He confesses his love for her, crying, and pleads with her to run away with him, promising to talk to everyone and convince them. However, Artie refuses to run away, to once again break a heart. As Sadhu continues to beg her not to leave him, Sharad and Ranjan arrive. Both the men get into a fight over Artie. Ranjan points a gun at Sadhu, while Sharad drags her away. But before the rituals can begin, Sadhu arrives with a gun in his hand, pointing it at Sharad. Everyone begins to panic, but before anything can happen, Ranjan arrives and asks Sadhu to drop the act. Turns out that Ranjan told him that Sharad is actually Apa's husband, and it was all a plan to make Sadhu realize that he still loves Artie, and even his family was in on it. The movie ends with Artie and Sadhu finally getting married and finding their happiness, after overcoming their obstacles and misunderstandings.